Hello Proponomics people and welcome to day five of the 2023 December Advent calendar. Now today's subject is inflation and the importance of it for property investors and on property investors returns as well. So inflation has been massively in the news for the last 18 months or so and indeed I've been talking about it extensively for nearly the last three years because the inevitable consequence in an economy where lots of money is pumped into it in terms of stimulus, which is exactly what happened during the pandemic. The government injected money in so many different ways into people's pockets, into businesses' pockets, in order to just keep the economy going while there were various lockdowns going on, that there has to be an impact. And that impact is usually inflation. So what is inflation, first of all? It is the rate at which prices move up over time. It's normally measured monthly and annually, and annually is the figure that we normally talk about. Now, confusingly, there are so many different ways of measuring and talking about inflation. If you hear the word inflation in the news, normally, in this day and age, the media are talking about what we call CPI, the Consumer Prices Index, and that is a measure of how much a basket of goods, and that is set by the Office for National Statistics, has gone up compared to the price of that basket of goods one year ago. Of course, sometimes things go down as well. Petrol and diesel can be a, a particularly volatile one that goes up and down depending on what's going on in the oil producing world apart from anything else and depending on demand as well in the global economy. Certain things just seem to get more expensive over time. Um, food has been relatively flat for many years and then extremely volatile and gone up in price maybe 20% over the past 12 months or so. Well, there's certainly been a point over the last 12 months where the 12 monthly figure was 20% increase. Now that's massive because obviously it affects everybody, but the less disposable income you have, the more that would impact you, of course. And then we could look at the old measure of inflation, RPI, the retail price index. We could look at the CPIH, which is the consumer prices index, including an allowance for housing costs, because of course everyone has them. Even if you live in a property with no mortgage, you lucky person, you've still got to consider the cost of things like council tax and bills. So the, the housing element is looking specifically normally at the cost of rents and mortgages and associated costs of maintaining a property. So there's all those different types of inflation and many, many more that get discussed. But why is it important? Well, first of all, at a very high level, the rate of inflation will usually inform what the central bank is going to do about the interest rate. If there's high inflation, the conventional wisdom dictates that they'll put the interest rate up, the base rate, in order to make borrowing more expensive, to slow down the economy and also slow down demand. So it stops companies from expanding. It might even make them contract. Usually increases unemployment alongside that as well. And all these things help to slow the economy down. The, the majority of inflation in the UK economy, like the US, is driven by consumption and how much is spent by individual actors, the households in the economy, on various goods. Some of those goods are things like food, of course, they're necessary staples. And at the top end, some of those goods will be things like luxuries um, that they that potentially households can do without and might well cut back on if things get more expensive. So that's why inflation is relevant, because it directly impacts interest rates. And as interest rates go up, property investors have to pay more for their debt. They also have to face a higher cost of not only servicing the bank debt, but they're looking at a lower cash flow from properties that they're holding as well. So obviously all of that is important and it makes properties less attractive to buy for investors, which is what we've seen happen very much so over the past 12 months with many, many fewer mortgage completions than we've seen in the past. And quite a lot of that is due to investors who need buy to let mortgages not buying because there aren't great returns to be made in buy to let property at the moment. This ultimately also impacts prices by usually sending them downwards, although when you've had particularly high inflation like we have, house prices don't have to move downwards because they can stay the same and still get cheaper. Why is that? Because inflation is making them cheaper because the same money is not buying 
the same amount of goods and services in general. So if house prices stay the same, which they largely have done in 2023, pretty much, then they're cheaper as long as wages are going up. Now, wages have gone up quite considerably, over 8% a year at certain points in 2023. So that has made houses more affordable, even if they're at the same price as they were a year or so ago. It also tends to mean houses take longer to sell. So there's more costs associated with selling houses because they like to stand empty for a bit longer. Deals might be more likely to fall through. And especially as rates are changing, you know, we've reached a point now where we've reached what looks like the top of an interest rate cycle. And therefore, there's a bit more stability in the market and you are seeing people come back to the market. But of course, as the price of the debt has gone up, even if the price of the house hasn't increased, the price of the mortgage you would have to pay has increased. Now, on the flip side, of course, the price of the rent you would have to pay has also increased because landlords have been forced to put rents up in order to try and service their much higher debt costs if they've got mortgages. They might have put rents up if they've just seen the opportunity to put rents up because everybody else has. But also, they might not just be gouging the prices, as some people seem to think. Um, they've also got to increase face the higher costs of insurance insurance premiums have got up massively they've also got to face the higher maintenance costs that they're dealing with so you know it's a lot more expensive to get tradesmen out to properties than it was before the pandemic for example cost of that has gone up 50 percent or more realistically so huge cost increases not just in the cost of debt have also impacted returns for property investors Now, inflation has just moved under 5% in the most recent figures that were released. They were the October figures that were released in November 2023. And the hope and most of the conventional wisdom now states inflation is going to continue to taper back downwards towards its target of 2%. The pace at which that happens is something that will be debated a lot over the course of the coming months. And I'll also be talking about it quite a lot. But ultimately... What's the upside of inflation for property investors? Well, if you borrowed 100k against a property three years ago and that house price has inflated by 25%, but also the cost of everything has inflated by 25% on average, the only thing that hasn't inflated is that 100k. So you might have paid, especially if you borrowed it three years ago, you might have paid 3% a year so far on that debt. So you might have paid a simple level about 9% cost on that debt but its value has gone down by 25%. So that's a a fantastic result in terms of why fixed debt can be so useful for property investors. So times of inflation, if inflation is under control, and if that inflation is also being manifested in house prices going upwards, and it's all happened in different times and different cycles over the past few years, so it's been quite difficult to follow, but inflation in general would be a good thing for property investors. And if inflation is something that you fear, what you really should be fearing is deflation because prices going downwards really messes with so many things in the economy. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about importance of understanding the economic cycle for property investors. And I hope to see you in that video then.